Hello everyone and welcome to Coding Cart. So in our previous session, we have already discussed about the introduction of graph data structure. I have also explained you how to create and display the graph data structure. Now we'll move to the next session, which is graph traversal. So here I will be discussing both DFS and BFS. So in today's session, I will be discussing about only DFS the first search. So I will be explaining both the method, the iterative and the recursive method. So let us move forward. So let me explain you here. Let me create one graph, then I will be explaining each and everything in detail. So let me first create one directed graph in which the direction is given. Like this is a node having value 10. And this node 10 is connected to another node, which is having value suppose 20 one another node having value suppose 30 another node 40 50 60 and suppose this 60 is connected to 70 so for example suppose this is one sample graph given to us okay now we have to do dfs this dfs traversal means Suppose if we are standing on any node, for example, I'm standing at this node having value 10. If I'm standing here, then I can move in any direction. I can go either on 50, 20, 40 or 30. So if I'm choosing any path, if I'm suppose choosing this path, then I have to complete each and every path connected to this node. Okay. For example, this is the longest one. Okay, now if suppose I'm standing at 10 now and I'm going towards this direction, then I will first cover each and every node in this direction, each and every node. Then only I will go for another node from this standing position. This is the logic in DFS means if you are standing on any node and if you have chosen any node to traverse, then you have to first cover that path. So for example, this is the longest one. So let us move. If I'm going in this direction, then I will reach to 50. Again, you can see here from 50, we can move to 60 as direction is given. Yes, I can move here again from 60. I can move to 70. Yes. Now from 70, I cannot move anywhere. This is the dead end. Now this was when we were standing on 10 and we have moved in the direction 50. 60 and 70. So for this node, this is one direction movement. Now, now it can move either towards 40, 30 or 20. So for example, it is moving towards 20. So 20 will be covered. Now after 20, nothing is present. So dead end. Now two are left 40 and 30. Suppose it is going towards 40. So 40 will be covered. Now again, dead end. This is over now from again this 10 I can go to 30 so 30 will be covered and dead end so you can see here the output is like 10 50 60 70 20 40 30 it depends means if you are standing on this 10 either you can go towards 20 30 or 40 it depends if I have chosen first for this you can see 20 then 20 will be our output. If I have chosen 40 first, then instead of this 20, 40 you would have come. So it depends on our movement. So for example, if you are standing on 10 and suppose this path is already covered. Now this, now these three are left. Now I can either go towards 20, 40 or 30. So accordingly, this output will differ. If you are going towards 20 first, then 20 will come 40, then 40. For example, you can go from here from 10 either you can go towards 20 then 30 then 40. This is also true or you can go like 30 40 and then 20 for these three nodes 20 30 and 40. So this is also correct. So in this way this total graph all the nodes are being traversed. So in this DFS to apply this logic how to do this traversal we have to use stack data structure we have to use stack data structure so i will be explaining you why stack data structure so what we will do here is we will take one stack 
and give the current element on which we are standing. So suppose we are standing on node 10. So we will give here in this stack. So here our task will be to empty this stack. So we will use on while loop while this stack is not empty. Okay. So what we will do, we will simply pop out the element which is present in the stack. So, so currently in our stack, the value is 10. So let us pop out this one. What we will do is simply pop out the value from the stack and say that value is the, our current value. So whenever any value is being popped out from the stack, our task is to print that value. That is our output. So we will print that value. So 10 is printed in our output. Now, when this value is being popped out, so our stack is empty. Now, next thing is when we popped out one element, what we are going to do here is our next target is to add all its adjacent element in this stack. So you can see here for 10, what are its adjacent value? For 10, we have 50, 20, 40 and 30, right? So let us add in this stack 50, 20, 40 and 30. Okay. Next target was to add all the adjacent nodes. Now again, we are going to pop the element from the stack. So a stack is not empty, we will simply pop out 30. Now, next thing is we have to add, this was our very first task and this was our second task. We have to add its adjacent nodes, which is connected to node 30. So nothing is connected. So nothing will be added. Now again, our stack is not empty. What we will do? We will simply pop out this 40. So whenever the value is being popped out, we are simply going to print that one. So 40 is added again, no any node connected to 40. So we will simply pop out this one for 20 also nothing is connected. So we will pop out this one. Now our stack is having value now 50. 50 is present. So what we will do, we will pop out this 50. We will pop out this 50. So 50 is popped out. Okay. So now my stack is empty, but when 50 is popped out, its connected node is present, which is 60. So we will add 60 in the stack. Now again, we will pop out this 60. So 60 is popped out and its connected node, which is 70 will be added. So we will add 70. Now again, the stack is not empty. We will pop out this one and its connected node is nothing. So nothing will be added. So we are done. All the values are being popped out. And if you see here, all the values are being traversed also. Okay. So this is the logic for DFS. By using the stack, we can traverse each and every node. So let us write the code. And here I will explain you each and everything one more time in detail. So the very first method will be the iterative method. iterative method. So let us first create one graph. So we will take the same example. So graph equal to and here the values were the same value like 10 was connected with 10 was connected with 20, 30, 20, 30, 40 and 50. 20 was connected with nothing, 20 was connected with nothing, 20 was connected with nothing, 30 was connected with again nothing, 30 was also a dead end, 40 was again connected with nothing, 50 was connected with, not 50 was connected with 60. and 60 was connected with 70, 70 
and 70 was connected with nothing. So this was our graph. So I have just given the hard coded value over here. Now let us write the main logic. So let us create one function, define DFS, and this will be a iterative method. So ITR. So it will take two things. One is the our graph in which we have to do the traversal and another will be the start node from where you want to do the traversal okay so this is done so let us call this function from here dfs underscore itr which is the iterative method and here we are passing graph and the start node so we want to start with the node 10 as I explained you here with the node 10 only. So we are done here. Now let us write the logic. So what we have to do here is first thing is we have to take one data structure which is the stack. So let us take stack equal to one list in which we will add the very first node which is our start node. Okay. So we are done. Now we will write the logic while while this stack is not empty so while this stack is not empty which means while stack so until this stack is having value this while will execute so what was our very first task we have to pop out the element from stack so let us write current equal to stack dot pop so whenever we are getting any value popped out what is our very first task is to print that one so print the current so once the value is being printed what is our next task we have to add all its associated nodes its connected nodes again into the stack so for that one let us write one for loop for val in graph graph and for the key which is current so basically this value will be as a key in the graph so for all the key we have a value which is present in a list so that's why we are using this for val in graph and we are passing the key as current means for that current value give me the list of the nodes which are connected with that one and here what we will do stack dot append we have to append all the value all its connected values it means for this 10 we have given from our code 20 30 40 and 50 so we were starting from the node 10 so 10 was printed after that 20 30 40 and 50 were added in the stack so 20 30 40 and 50 was added so on the top of the stack 50 is present so 50 will be popped out so 50 is popped out and you can see here we have to add its connected nodes so 60 was present for this 50 is connected to 60 so 60 was added again top of the stack is having value 60 so 60 will be popped out and 70 will be added so 60 is connected to 70 so 70 was added in this stack now again top of the stack is having value 70 so 70 will be popped out 70 got popped out now you can see here top of the stack is having value 40 so 40 will be popped out and no any connected nodes are present for the 40 so nothing will be added similarly 30 will be popped out no any connected nodes this will be popped out after that 20 will be popped out so this is our output you can see 10 50 60 70 40 30 20 so you can see here 10 50 60 70 40 30 and 20 so i hope you understood this explanation in a very simple way so if you have learned something new please do like our videos and subscribe to our channel coding card and stay tuned for the next video so in the next video, I will be explaining you with a recursive approach.